Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. There's a new article from Israel 365 News called Israeli Politician Carves Stones to Build Third Temple. And this caught my attention because I did a similar video, but it was two years ago. Um, it's this one right here. Actual building of the third temple itself just began where they started making the, the stones for the third temple. So I'm going to do a quick review of that after we read this first story. By the way, um, I'm partnered with Israel 365. I support a couple of their charities. If you go to the description box of any video, uh, you'll see number two and number three. Uh, that's with Israel 365. It has to do with charities for victims of the war. Uh, there's another one for Mayir Tamari, who was killed by a terrorist. So you can support his uh, widow and his children that were um, left behind after he passed away. Um, so make sure to check that out. I also have other charities and other things that you can look at. Okay, so this is an article by Adam Eliyahu Berkowitz. Uh, you can go to my playlist called Special Guests. I've interviewed him a couple times. The most recent one was where we were talking about the red heifer. There's a lot of misconceptions about the red heifer. And you, you have to go to people that actually know. Okay, he's in contact with the Temple Institute. And he answered all my questions. So if you missed that, um, you know what? I'll put the link for it in the description box below in case you missed it. Okay, so what's going on here? So now here, now we have this other story, a new story about more stones being, being carved for the third temple. Okay, so let me zoom in. A video was posted on social media showing former Knesset member Moshe Feiglin near the town of Eli carving stones for the third temple. Quote, this was a very moving experience for me, uh, Feiglin told, told Israel 365 News. Feiglin, I, I assume it's pronounced Feiglin, I'm not sure, recited a special prayer before taking up a hammer and chisel to carve a large stone. The prayer asked that uh, just as we carve the stones to serve God, he should form us to serve him. And uh, that just as the stones will be steadfast in the service of God, so, sh so should we be steadfast in our unity and love of our fellow man. Uh, and then he says, we are a very special generation which I think is interesting because we talk about that a lot on this channel. I have a spreadsheet um, for quotes about the rising generation. I'm not going to go into that right now, but you can access my spreadsheets anytime. The link for my spreadsheets is also in the descri description box of each video. But this is a, a term that comes up time and time again in our church. Uh, it's really taken off, especially with President Monson's presidency until now. So, you have like a parallel thing, I think, going on with the Jews. They, they really do. It really seems from what, everything that I've seen, everything that I've seen doing this channel, it really feels like something is going on with them as well, that they can feel and see the, t the signs of the times. Of course, they're expecting Messiah for the first time, but I think the Lord is preparing them for the second coming um, in a way that they can understand. And I think this is one of those things. That's why I pay attention to these kind of stories. Okay, continuing. This is part of an, on, of an ongoing project in which the stones are stored for future use. He referred to a popular song by Israeli composer Naomi Shemer. Uh, if on the mountain you hewed stone, <coughs> sorry, you hewed stone to erect a new stru structure, not in vain, my brother, did you hew for a new structure. From these stones uh, will be built the Mikdash, which is like the, like the, the temple proper, like the building. Uh, the Mikdash will be built, will be built, will be built. If on the mountain you planted cedars, cedars in the place of thistles, not in vain, my brother, did you plant in the place of thistles. Uh, from these cedars will be built the mount. And then Feiglin says, the deepest prayers of the nation of Israel are appearing in reality today. Unlike some politicians, Feiglin is a man of unwavering ideals. In 2009, he told the Jerusalem Post that if he was elected prime minister, he would rebuild the destroyed temple in Jerusalem. And uh, I double-checked on this guy. Uh, on his Wikipedia, it does seem like he did have some aspirations to become prime minister, and I guess that could still be fulfilled in the future. Um, recent news from uh, the Times of Israel, Feiglin urges resettling Gaza, says his far-right party will aim to replace Netanyahu. And this is from January 17th of this year. So 
I don't know, maybe he's still serious about this. Uh, continuing, quote, I don't know if I have, if I will have the merit of doing something that is the aspiration of every, every Jew, but if I become prime minister, I will take away control over the Temple Mount from the Waqf, the Islamic Trust, and reinstate Jewish sovereignty over the entire Mount and hopefully rebuild the Temple. Feiglin said that rebuilding the Temple and all that it symbolized was the essence of a Jewish state. Feiglin is the head of the Zehut party and headed the Manhigut Yehudit uh, within the Likud party, representing Likud in the, in the Knesset between 2013 and 2015. He returned to Likud in 2021, but left the party again in 2023 in response to Defense Minister Yoav Gallant's announcements that the IDF would return the Palestinians to Gaza after the war. And as we just saw, he uh, it's, it seems like he wants to take it. He wants to take Gaza. So, he, yeah, he's he's pretty far to the right compared to the rest of the Israeli um, political spectrum, it would seem to me. OK, so here he is um, working on a stone, uh, helping to prepare it for the third temple. So let's go back to 2022. In fact, um, let's look at my spreadsheet. I have a timeline for uh, different things that have taken place to prepare for the third temple. Uh, this spreadsheet is called Judaism Temple Preparation. And uh, it's a timeline of everything that I've been able to find um, that shows the Jews, um, primarily the Temple Institute, but not just the Temple Institute, other groups and individuals, preparing for the third temple. Um, so the first thing that I have on here, let me just double check. I should just delete all these other rows. The first thing that I have on here is uh, the establishment of the Temple Institute in 1987. And uh, I'm going to do a quick review of these things. But the second most recent entry that I have is from uh, May 5th, 2022. Uh, Jews begin to prepare stones for the construction of the third temple. It's the first time that I've heard of that. I think that's when it started. <coughs> and, and I think they're actually serious. I don't think it's just like a, a little thing. At, I mean, I think they do plan to actually use these stones if they're successful in uh, gaining control of the Temple Mount. So, okay, so May 5th, 2022, uh, Jews begin building Third Temple on, on, Is on Israel Independence Day, also written by Adam Eliyahu Berkowitz. Okay, so I think this is how this whole stone carving thing all started, was right here. While most Israelis were celebrating Independence Day by having family barbecues, a small group gathered in the old city of Jerusalem and began chipping away at stones, preparing them to be used to build the prophesied third temple. The event was organized by Rabbi Aria Lippo, who envisioned it while on his way to the funeral of Rabbi Chaim uh, Kanievsky. And by the way, that was like a big event. I did a video about that because he... Uh, is held in high regard by by many um, Orthodox Jews. Okay, in March. Uh, Lippo ascends to the Temple Mount on a daily basis when the Israeli pol police permits Jews to enter, but was deliberating with a friend, which was more important, to attend the funeral of the Sadiq, or righteous Jew, so Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky was considered a Sadiq, or to ascend to the Temple Mount. To honor Rabbi Kanievsky... He and a friend were learning a halakhic uh, or Torah law ruling written by Rabbi Kenievsky, in which he stated that the stones for the temple had to be cut by Jews uh, with the intention of honoring God's name. Okay, so it has to be built by Jews according to that. Uh, quote, we have a mitzvah or a commandment to build the temple. This mitzvah is not conditional or time bound. Uh, we have this requirement at all times. So it is a pity that we are not actively engaged in it. Right now, it is politically complicated for us to begin building on the Temple Mount, but that does not exempt us from this mitzvah, end quote. Rabbi Lipo realized that it was possible to begin uh, to actually perform this mitzvah by preparing the stones that will be used to build the third temple. So this is, it seems like this is how it started. And uh, again, I think that they would actually use these stones. Um, so here's like some pictures of working on stones. 
In order to perform the mitzvah properly, Rabbi Lipo had to consult with several rabbis who were uh, expert in issues concerning the temple. Because, because of its politically sensitive nature, in aspect some rabbis consider uh, when ruling about the Temple Mount and Third Temple, uh, there are normally vastly divergent views regarding such issues. Uh, Lippo said, quote, All of the rabbis we consulted agreed that we should begin preparing the stones. This wasn't just a physical action to produce dressed stones. We had to be very careful about our intentions. Of course, this was not a political statement. The intention was to unify the Jews and all of the world in making God one and his name one, end quote. It was for this reason that they chose to begin forming the stones for the third temple on Yom Ha'atzmut Maut, uh, Israel's Independence Day. Uh, most quarries in Israel are operated by Arabs, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, they preferred not to use stones from those locations. They, lo- they collected 23 sizable stones from a field near the community of Aish Kodesh, or I guess translated as Holy Fire in Samaria, or uh, that's like the West Bank. A contractor from Judea transported the stones to an area near Hurva Synagogue in the Old City. And this uh, synagogue, by the way, this is the one where they have the um, the menorah uh, set up. Uh, I'll remind you that the Temple Institute has created everything for the temple. All the vessels, all the instruments, uh, it's, it, I, if I'm understanding this right, they've created the Ark of the Covenant. Um, we've recently talked about the uh, clothing, the robes, the breastplate for the high priest. We were talking about the gemstones used on the breastplate. And then you have the menorah, and they have this set up outside the Herva synagogue. It's like on public display in, um, I think, like a bulletproof glass case. Okay, so this is a significant uh, synagogue in the Old City. Okay, Lippo's mother, who was born in the state of Israel 74 years ago, took part enthusiastically helping to chip away at the stones. Lippo plans on holding more events of this type to prepare more stones for the Third Temple. And uh, I I don't know if like this newest story that we just read um, about, what's his name again, Moshi... Feiglin. I don't know if this is in connection uh, with this, but I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Joshua Wander took part in the event. Quote, this was an important act uh, unto itself and a message to the nation as well as to the world, but it was also a message to Hashem or the Lord, the name uh, meaning Jehovah or Yahweh, that we were not just sitting around waiting for a Messiah. Uh, we had the intention to show that we are actively working to bring the third temple as prophesied as a command. And uh, that's it. So it seems that you have the beginnings of this back in 2022. And now I haven't heard anything since then, except for now. Uh, this article published July 1st with this um, this uh, politician that d- does seem serious about becoming prime minister And uh, it'd be interesting to see if that happens. And if it does, if he makes good on his word and to take the Temple Mount. And of course, that would lead to uh, World War III, uh, Gog and Magog and all the rest of it, most likely. So anyway, um, there's been a lot of things going on. Uh, I reviewed it in this video, but this this video is two years old. I've done like a follow up video since then. And I'm not going to do like a comprehensive thing right now, but I do have some just key articles and pictures showing different efforts um, that are going on right now to prepare for the third temple. They've been training the the Kohanim, which are the priests. Um, They have kept track in Judaism. They've kept track of uh, these descendants of Aaron because the descendants of Aaron are the priests. Um, and then you have the rest of the tribe of Levi, but the priests are the descendants of Aaron. And here are some of them right here. Uh, if I remember right, this guy's name is Baruch, uh, Kohen. And, um, he was, I guess, selected by the Sanhedrin to be the high priest. So if they went through with their plans, uh, at the moment, unless something changes, he would be the high priest, but you can see them doing like a priestly training right there. 
they've done a bunch of uh, reenactments uh, throughout Israel of all the different. I think at this point I've I've seen them do reenactments of all the different holidays throughout the year. Here's um, the water libation ritual. This is part of the Feast of Tabernacles or Sukkot, where they go to the uh, Gihon Spring and draw water. And then t uh, if the temple was built today, they would take it up to the altar. You'd have the water and the wine libation take place where both of them drain off the side of the altar uh, during the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, this one, uh, blowing of shofars uh, for the Jubilee, uh, that's not something that takes place right now, but if the temple is constructed, I can't remember if it's the temple and or all the tribes gathered, but that's what's required. One of those two things or both of them for the Jubilee to be observed, but they were doing like a reenactment. <clears throat> Here's a uh, first fruits ceremony reenactment. You know, I think this is the water libation again, but just a different year and with like a, a pure gold uh, vessel for the water. You have this, you know, altar. And then they, they have actual altars that they've built uh, that are ready to go for the third temple. And uh, there's, it seems that there's been a few iterations of that uh, as I'm about to show you on my timeline. Uh, but they've, constructed I, I think several altars and at least one of them is designed so that it can be quickly assembled on the temple mount like if the word came that okay now you can do sacrifices on the temple mount they wouldn't have to have the whole temple constructed they could start doing uh, sacrifices right away so they have a portable altar that's ready to go i don't think it's this one i'm not sure though uh, that's a part that i'm not too clear on um, and then they've gone into great detail to like reproduce everything, including the dyes, uh, the correct way using the correct, uh, insects and, you know, plants and stuff like that. Uh, this one's talking about the crimson wool and how there's, you know, been this effort to authentically recreate the, the, the red dye. So those are just some pictures to show you. I'll put the links for all these articles in the description box below. But you can also come to my spreadsheet called Judaism Temple Preparation, and I, I have all those articles in column I uh, for my references. And uh, let's just do a quick run through. So 1987, the Temple Institute is established. Uh, 2002, uh, Ramat Gan is the location, Bar Ilan University. Claimed to have verified the specific insect referred to in the Bible used for the manufacturing of unique red dye <laughs> used for the temple curtain, or I guess like the veil, as well as the garments for the high priest. Uh, 2009, uh, the first that I can find, uh, you have the first altar that was built. And um, uh, building began on Tisha B'Av. That's the day on the Hebrew calendar that they commemorate the destruction of the first and second temples. Uh, but this was done by the Temple Institute. Um, let's see. The first Jubilee year begins as Sanhedrin revives 2,000-year-old blessing for counting of Jubilee years. But again, my understanding is that they don't actually observe it, but they've like, it seems like they established like, okay, this is this is when. Um, and then you have a second altar um, in 2015. Let's see. Announcement of uh, compiling a list of Jewish priests or Kohanim who would be eligible to prepare the red heifer and serve in the temple. So they've started like finding people that would be able to do that. Um, yeah. Uh, continuing. Uh, there's more stuff here. Here's what I was talking about before. Uh, Baruch Kohen being selected to be the next Kohen Gadol or the high priest. Here's a reenactment of Yom Kippur, another reenactment, water libration. There, there's a bunch of reenactments, some of which they've actually sacrificed a lamb uh, not that it would have been like a ritual, like an actual ritual is just a reenactment, but they have gone as far as to to sacrifice a lamb. Um, yeah, there's more and more and more. Here's the third altar. And, and there's just a bunch of things. I, I guess I'm not going to go over all these. Here's a fourth altar. Um, and then you have the stones, which started being prepared in 2022. And then what we just covered today. And... Oh, I still need to put it on here. And then earlier this year, 
April 18th, there was another Passover reenactment. And that's like a common thing. They do, they do a bunch of reenactments of all the different holidays from what I can tell. Now to finish this up, uh, how do we view, view this as members of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Well, I'm not sure how to view it, frankly. We've talked about this many, many times. We've talked about the BYU Jerusalem Center. I'm of the opinion that that building can be turned into a temple, not a temple like the third temple. But as we looked at the history of the city of Zion, New Jerusalem in Jackson County, Missouri, it's clear that there were going to be 24 temples and that they would have different purposes, uh, some of which would be education uh, for like education, some of which would be for regular services uh, on Sunday, some of which would be administrative. And so I think it's very likely that in the future at some point, whenever it's proper to do so, and the church would never break Israeli law, but that the BYU Jerusalem Center could be converted into a temple. Maybe it'll happen right when Christ comes to the Mount of Olives. He'll go to the Mount of Olives and then look north and be like, that's my new headquarters. That's my new temple. You know, I could see it happening that way. Um, However, let me just share a few key things that have been said in church history. And this is, at the moment, all that I can find. Joseph Smith talked about the fact that there will be, (coughs) excuse me, that there will be a temple again in Jerusalem. Um, He doesn't give a whole lot of detail about it. Uh, Charles W. Penrose, who became a, um, a counselor in the first presidency, uh, he t- he had the opinion or said that the temple would be built in its former place. So we have to take that into account. Um, again, there could be multiple temples in Jerusalem. Maybe the first one will be the BYU Jerusalem Center, and then maybe later the actual third temple that we, like what we picture as the third temple um, in the same style as the second temple and the first temple, maybe that will be built. Uh, who Who knows how things will actually go? But he talks about it being built in the same location. Um, Here we have John Taylor. At the time, he was president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. He's talking to one of the Rothschilds. And um, speaking to him, yeah, to Baron Rothschild, he says, You will build a temple for the Lord, for the Lord has shown us, among other things, that you Jews have quite a role to perform in the latter days in that all the things spoken by your old prophets will be fulfilled, that you'll be gathered to old Jerusalem, and that you will build a temple there. And when you build that temple, and the time has arrived, the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Uh, This is when he's like giving him a tour of um, Temple Square, and he's looking at the Salt Lake Temple. Later he says, uh, this is Baron Rothschild, talking to John Taylor. Well, this is not the temple, like talking about the Salt Lake Temple. And then John Taylor says, no, uh, not not that you are going to build. This is ours. And we expect to build hundreds of them yet and to administer in them in carrying out the work of God. Okay. Later, you have Charles W. Penrose again, uh, this time not definitively saying that it would be built on the same spot, but he says that the temple may be rebuilt and the mosque of the Muslim, which now stands in his place, may be moved out of the way. Oh, wait, never mind. I guess he is saying it definitively. I thought he kind of... Okay, whatever. And that's another thing. I did a video about the Dome of the Rock and just floating the idea that that could be converted into the temple, which I, th- I know that that's just a radical idea. But I've shown that there have been temples, like temples that we have right now, like the Provo City Center Temple and other temples, which were originally some other structure, but then converted into a temple. So there is precedence for that in this dispensation. And I went into the history of the Dome of the Rock, how it's actually patterned after Christian uh, churches in that area. We went into the symbolism of domes. So I don't think that that's too wild of an idea. In fact, I could see that being a Christ-like solution to this problem. Because, like, could you imagine... Could you imagine what things would be like if the Dome of the Rock was destroyed? There's so many that love that building, and it has a long history. And, um, you know, that might be something that could serve in the millennium if it was converted into a true temple that would unify um, Muslims that decide to convert uh, to the church in the millennium. 
I think there's going to be a lot of work done among the Muslims in the millennium, and that could possibly help things. You know, I don't think it's too wild of an idea. I think any temple can be converted into, or any building can be converted into a temple. Uh, later on, we have uh, Bruce R. McConkey. This is going to be the last one. Uh, this is what he said. Uh, he talks about that perhaps it'll be built on the very site of the old one. So he, I think that's where I got confused. Charles W. Penrose seemed to believe that it would be built for sure on the Temple Mount. Bruce R. McConkie says perhaps. So maybe it doesn't have to be like that, but perhaps. Uh, later on, he says, <clears throat> this is in Millennial Messiah, by the way. He says, who shall build this temple? The Lord himself shall do it by the hands of his servants, the prophets. And then later on, he says, um... Who are those that are afar off who shall come to Jerusalem to build the house of the Lord? Uh, surely they are the Jews who have been scattered afar. By what power and under whose authorization shall the work be done? There is only one place under the whole heavens where the keys of temple building are found. There is only one. There is only one people who know how to build temples and what to do in them when they are completed. That people is the Latter Day Saints. The temple in Jerusalem will not be built by Jews who have assembled there for political purposes as at present. It will not be built by people who know nothing whatever about the sealing ordinances and their application to the living and the dead. It will not be built by those who know nothing about Christ and his laws and the mysteries reserved for the saints. But it will be built by Jews who have come unto Christ, who who uh, once again are in the true fold of their ancient shepherd and who have learned anew about temples because they know that Elijah did come not to sit at a vacant chair at some Jewish feast of the Passover, but to the Kirtland Temple on April 3rd, 1836, to Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery. The temple in Jerusalem will be built by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They that are afar off, they that have come from an American Zion they who have a temple in Salt Lake City will come to Jerusalem to build uh, there another holy house in in the Jerusalem portion of the mountains of the Lord's house. So I tend to go with the more recent um, sayings of prophets and apostles because over time, the Lord reveals more. It's line upon line, precept upon precept. That's how I do it with with any topic. So it may be that in the early church, they believed that um, no, it would be the Jews that would build the temple. But later on, more revelation was received and uh, our understanding changed. So that's what I tend to go with. But ultimately, uh, beyond that, I just wait to see what's going to happen. So um, I could see any of these things happening. I could see the Jews uh, just building the, the, the third temple, and that's it. I could also see the Dome of the Rock being converted into a temple. I can also see the BYU Jerusalem Center being converted into a temple. Not a temple for, you know, ordinances of today, like what we do in temples now, like with endowment rooms and a baptistry. Although that's not outside the, the realm of possibility either. Uh, any building can be renovated so that it can fulfill those functions. It's not that hard to renovate buildings. It takes time and money, but it can be done. So I see lots of different possibilities. So I just need to say this anytime we talk about the temple in Jerusalem, just that it doesn't seem like there's a really firm uh, position as far as the church is concerned. But this is the most recent statement that I know of from Bruce R. McConkey, so I tend to go with that. Okay, well, that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.